There's many ways for self-learning developers to grasp knowledge about particular topics. You can literally lose yourself in this world of possibilities. I would like to give you some advices how you can speed up your learning process and how you can be more effective when learning to code. I would give you tips which worked for me when I was on this career changing path. That was actually not that long ago, so let's get to the episode. Hi there, my name is Daniel and welcome on my channel. If you are interested in switching your career to IT, if you are interested in topics like business or technology, this is the right place for you. Today I want to talk about speeding up your learning process in case when you are on self-learning path and want to become a software engineer. Two years ago I was able to switch my career and get my first job in IT, but before that I've had three years of self-learning process. I will tell you a few things which helped me on this process and probably they can also help you. Public learning. So if we are asking if self-learning how to code is hard, in most cases in our head coming resounding yes, of course. This can be true if you would stick too much into this self-learning part of this path. Learning how to code alone is harder when you learn by quietly consuming content instead of playing an active role in developer community. That's what I'm doing here on this channel. My first episode was at the time when I had no IT job yet. So my intention was to start this learning public journey and help myself grasping new pieces of knowledge. You can do the same for yourself. But would you ask, do I have to start YouTube channel then to learn to how to code? Of course not. You don't have to directly start YouTube channel, but simple GitHub repository with history of your projects would be a good start point here. You should share what you learn when you learn. There are many advantages of this approach. So first is you are building public record of your interests and progress. Second one is you are learning faster by documenting and sharing your knowledge with others. And third, you attract community of mentors and connections and they will help you learn faster than you will be able to do this by yourself. By utilizing community-based learning approach and sharing your knowledge, you are becoming part of nearly infinite network of knowledge and opportunities. Learning public can be a good topic for separate video here. If you want to know how to start one tip from me would be try to create some mark of your learning in our community we used to call this learning exhaust that means always when you learn something new try to create something that you wish you would found before you started to learn particular thing this can be as simple as blog post about things that you've learned this can be answering a question on stack overflow this can be tweet about your findings of course you can use also small github repository with example of your code if you want to go bigger then you can create your newsletter or make videos on YouTube or Twitch. Please remember one thing. If you choose learning public as a part of your journey, it's not about reaching mass of people with your content. If you can do that, that would be great. But at the beginning, the biggest beneficiary of this approach should be future you. So if others benefit from it, that's a good bonus point. Do something original. I know this sounds difficult, but it doesn't have to be a giant task. Think about something what you like. There are many clone apps from tutorials. Try to do something unique. On my example, that was web page for my wife. I was designing and coding it by myself. I was applying for front-end roles. My wife needed at the time some web page for her photography business. I thought that would be perfect opportunity for me to showcase my skills. I started by doing research and asking my wife what she would need. After research phase, I was able to do my own design in Adobe XD. Next part was coding. The page was made in Gatsby and I've hosted it in using Netlify. Code quality at that time was acceptable for me. Page is working very good on mobile and desktop devices and it's translated in three languages. Probably you would ask me if now after two years in IT field, I feel embarrassed about quality of this project. In some degree, yes. I'm not proud of code quality there, but at that time that was all what I could do with my skills. Today that thing that I'm not proud of code quality there is only one thing for me that I made some progress and that's all about it. When coming to recruitment questions about this particular project, I could speak about that by hours. I was able to answer on many questions about landing page design and decisions I made because I went through this process by my own. By giving you this example, I want to say one more time, do something original and yours. People like differences. There are many boring resumes lying here and there on the recruiters tables. You have to stand out and show that you are capable of solving real problems and learn new things along the way. 
learning how to learn. This one is really, really important. I've lost a lot of time because either I was using resources which doesn't fit to my type of personality or I was approaching learning in a bad way. As an example, I will tell you my story. At the beginning, I was trying to learn myself how to code at evenings. After my eight to five job, that was horrible, horrible approach. After a whole day of mental working, my brain was exhausted and effectiveness on learning new coding material was really, really poor. After reading few books on effective learning, I've changed my approach and started doing my learning sessions right before my normal work, so in the mornings. This one thing increased my effectiveness and helped me learning faster. If you don't know where to start learning how to learn, I can recommend you this one book. You will see that here, Mind of Numbers, written by Barbara Oakley. As you probably know, our world is increasingly dependent on technology. I don't have to tell you that being competent in subjects like math, science can only help you in your career path. So this book shows how we are thinking and has a lot of actionable tips around how to improve our learning curve. You can find our answers for questions like how you learn, how to switch between different modes of thinking, how to remember what you learn already, and many, many more. I think I would make separate video about this book and um, make some review because this one is one of the most influencing books on my self-learning path which I ever read actually. Learn fundamentals and put them in practice. It's normal that at the beginning you would feel yourself overwhelmed. This is totally normal, but please, please don't skip fundamentals. This one is one of the reasons why many of us are slow and not efficient in learning how to code. If you skip fundamentals and run through basic material because you think, yeah, I know it well, this will kick you later on. I can guarantee you, you will get stuck when you will make this transition from fundamentals to writing your own code. I spent literally almost three years doing only fundamentals. In my case, because I was applying for front-end roles, that was HTML, CSS and JavaScript. No frameworks at all at the beginning. Every day I was writing layouts in pure HTML and CSS and I was writing simple JavaScript games like Maze or Tic-Tac-Toe. All this without using extra libraries because I knew at that time if I would make solid fundamentals, then for me it would be much easier to use frameworks and libraries later on. And actually that's how it was. Transition from JavaScript JavaScript or TypeScript wasn't that hard as it would be if I would not spend time on getting pure JavaScript knowledge. First frameworks I've touched around half year before I was starting to applying my first job in IT. So you see, almost two and a half years I was doing just basics. So if you think about skipping first chapter of basic course which you are currently taking because you have that feeling that you know this, be careful. This can hit you hard later on your self-learning path. You should try to get feedback on your code. This one is really important. I know it can be hard at the beginning when you think showing simple snippet is not worth it. Let me tell you how wrong it is. Learning version control and getting feedback to your code during this process of learning how to code is really, really crucial. This one is little connected with my first tip about public learning from the beginning of this episode. Let me tell you exactly why. By documenting your code on GitHub, you can much easier get feedback from other developers. We are using GitHub every day. You can easily share link to your repository and ask for feedback. Other important point is that you are simulating co-working in team of developers. So this is crucial skill if you want to get your first job. I'm learning a lot from feedback from my colleagues. PR reviews in my team are one of my favorite parts of this process because we as humans are limited. So and having possibility to speak about your solution with someone who is more experienced than you is priceless. You could use it as often as possible. Possible. Going back to GitHub repo and learning version control, other point worth mentioning here is you can show everybody this thing, yes? I mean learning to code. It's not just seasonal movement for you. If you would have history of your learnings on your GitHub profile, this would be a clear sign for somebody that your passion for coding is not something fleeting around here. It's real thing. Just show it and be yourself. Getting this first job in IT is really, really important. Many of us self-taught programmers having only this 
one point in mind. We used to be treating our journey as finite game, where the last event is getting our first job. I would like to break this pattern and show you something different on this channel. I would like to expand this idea that working in IT industry is infinite game. It is constant learning and growing. It is constant fighting with new challenges and searching for solutions. At the same time, every day you have the chance to feel this pleasure when you know that your solution is working and providing value for end users. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video about speeding up your learning process. If you don't mind, consider clicking like and subscribing my channel. That way you can be sure that you will not miss next episodes here. I hope you've learned something and you will put some actions from this video into your own process. See you in the next one.